Well, hello everybody. So, this is my new game. Uh, a lot of you probably already know, some of you probably don't. It's called Don Hunter. It's a game about paranormal investigation. And they just released in source code, because by the way, I'm not releasing binaries, uh, the new version 0.2.1. And uh, I want to show you more or less uh, how it works, what it does, uh, what it's about. And also to showcase the differences from the last version for those that were following. So yeah, uh, we have here the map. So uh, the menu just works with the arrows. And then here, uh, maps. There are a few maps. There are two tutorials. I added this new tutorial here. There's a new game. And um, something that is not from this release, but is already kind of new. We so that way, go to the mm, this kind of UI for the track. So basically, before we had to come here to the van and open it, but now it opens from here. So you can choose your uh, starting gear. So, okay, let me just first explain what is the game about, and then we can do all of this. Uh, so yeah, you can choose your gear here have descriptions and with patience you can just read and yeah this is the new map with the new NPC and you can close with the skateboard E and there's a glass house as the name indicates in the map which uh, the idea of this game is to identify the ghost so we'll see here that We have a ghost somewhere. Let's take a look. There is the ghost. There is the ghost. There is the ghost. Hello, Mr. Ghost. Hello, Mr. Ghost. There it goes. There it goes. So we have the ghost. And here we have what's called the bridge. That's where the ghost spawns and tends to be around this area. So the task I usually have is to measure different things. For example, uh, is the temperature negative? We can see the temperature is negative. So we can just press C and indicate that we found freezing temps. We can check the EMF and we see that we got EMF 5. So we found that, press C. We can point it with the UV torch. Not the best map to work with the UV torch. In theory, it should go green. This map I still haven't debugged that much, so because it's new. But yeah, if it doesn't turn green, then this is not this is not a thing. So you press C to found second C this discarded to say. That's not it. Or if you don't know, just leave it as without known. So the idea is that each piece of gear leaves you with a different piece of evidence that is explained around here. And then in the journal, every time we were clicking C, we were just ticking those buttons here, and the other one for UV was this one. That filters down here the ghosts that are possible, and you select the one that you think it is. But of course, we have many, and then they will create a repellent. You come here, that's the repellent, and it's here on your hand. And the idea is that we can just banish or expel the ghost by using the repellent. But you have to choose the right repellent. Or the right ghost, else it will not work. So we can choose here. We can drop the repellent and here are the dots. That's the repellent. And follow the ghost and make it sure that it gets all the repellent possible. And the ghost is still is still here. So probably is a different ghost. And you can try as many times as you want. Then there is a scoring system that I'll show you in a second. 
that will count how many times you used it, if you banish the ghost or not. But this is the rough idea. It's uh, similar to the concept of, of Phasmophobia and other games like that. It's just that it's 2D symmetric and has other concepts. So yeah, then when you finish banishing the ghost or expelling the ghost, uh, you can click and miss and we say, okay, I'm, I'm done. And then we will get to the summary screen and tell us which ghost it was in reality, time that we were uh, spending over there, or sanity, if we unhaunted the ghost or not, the amount of charges that we used, and the score. So by using more charges, this score will be lower. Uh, right now it's zero because we didn't, we didn't uh, expel any ghost. So yeah, that's more or less the concept of the game. Uh, next thing, what, are, what is new recently? Oh, the big map. The big map was empty before. This this map was completely empty. This is the university, and it's a very big map. But before it was totally empty. It was a bit sad. But now I added plenty of stuff. Now, all rooms, I think all rooms, have stuff on them. Some rooms more than others. Of course, I haven't spent that much time adding stuff, because also this map is very big. There is a lot of rooms to put, but yeah, I added a lot of chairs, tables, and so on, because it's a school, so... Making the whole idea and concept of the of the school map. So yeah, most rooms are very similar. I didn't think it twice. I made a few rooms slightly different, but yeah, I mean, but no, that's that's enough. Also, if you are new to the game. Notice that I have a flashlight that is activated using the tab button. This is a very common user error. And that is off. Because a lot of users, people say, oh, uh, I cannot see anything. It's, tot it's totally dark. Y yes, you have a flashlight. You need to use it. It's in here. It's in this side. So you need to press tab, and that starts the flashlight, and has three modes, low, medium, and high. Three presets, and then zero. And then the other thing is that all, all that, all that thing, those things here, those are switches to turn on the lights. So you need to go and press the switch with the E key. You need to press E on the switch and press it, and that will give you the light of the place. Which is important because your sanity goes down if the lights are not on. It doesn't matter if you have the flashlight on or off. It matters about in the place, are the lights on or off where you are walking? So yeah, and also this type of switch, which is different, that type of switch is different from this one, because this one is marking the inside. This is the switch of the room inside. So when I press this one, it turns on the light inside. The round switch, so this is a square switch. The square switch tells you that it's the, the room inside usually always placed besides the door, so it's easy to tell. And the round one spins for the current room. For example, this one has a switch in here. You can see it here. And it's round, meaning that it's for this room. So you press, and it turns on the, the switch. The lights. Uh, yeah, so you see that there are a few rooms that are slightly different as far as over here. But this is a very big place. It is a very big place. Don't ask me what are the fridges for. They are there. Maybe it's not a fridge. Who knows? Okay. So, yeah, this is the new university map. I will le let everyone take a look and experiment around it. Because it's big, it's interesting, has stuff and so on. Um, one thing that is new. Maybe you are are noticing that, that the doors are closing automatically. And it's not automatically, it's the ghost. It is now 
ghost events. And part of the ghost events, there are two types of ghost events right now. One is slamming the door closed. So it's randomly in the room that you are, uh, the ghost can close the door. I don't know if it will do it again. It just did it. Because I didn't close the door before. And now it doesn't want to. Because, I mean, ghosts. Because ghosts, uh, that's, that's what they do. It's not going to do what they want to do. It's like that. The other um, ghost event that is very subtle that we'll see over time is the flickering of the lights. That the lights can, can dim a bit and get a bit brighter. Um, that's also a bit of the... Uh, just to give it a bit uh, ambience. So those, those two events are new. It's the first two events that, that I have in the game. So I didn't want to start with something very complicated. Uh, but yeah, um, at least... We have something already to get a taste of ghost events. Um, yeah, more things, more things. There is a mechanic right now to hide under tables. For example, you can press E here. It will be hard to see there is an I here. I need to change that a bit. Yeah, that was a light flickering. It was darker and, and then brighter. Um, yeah, I don't know. The, when the lights are closed, the, same, the symbol is very well seen. If I hide here, you can see the symbol very well. But when the lights are on, it still is not very visible. So I need to find a good balance because before it was very bright and now it's not bright enough. Um, figures. Um, those things need more testing and more adjustment. Anyway, um, you cannot move in this state. I can look around. Uh, yeah, of course, the the sprite could be looking more like hidden, no? but uh, right now is what it is. But the idea, the idea is that the ghost, if you don't know, the ghost sometimes wants to go and kill you. I mean, it, it goes all red and, and tries to go for you and so on. Uh, when that happens, you can try to hide. You can use the mechanic to hide, and the ghost will be confused, trying to look for you, will not know where to look. Very simple. Uh, that's a new mechanic that is interesting. Can be under tables. Let, let me show you a different map, more a standard map. This is the basic map. So, for example, places where you can um, hide. There are a few interesting ones. So, for example, here in the closet. That's one way. Under a bed. It's another way. Or uh, in the trunk. In that trunk. Those are common ways. And under tables. So that was showing already under tables. I don't think we have any other item here. There is another trunk over here that we can hide on the trunk. Um, no, it's that and, and the tables. There is nothing else to hide from the ghost. Yeah, and then here, for example. Yeah. Uh, another thing you might notice is the lighting system is new. You can see all the bluish shadows here. That has been done to give more brightness to dark areas. So, when it's totally dark, there is some bluish tint that they will emphasize, you will get a bit of emphasis over time. Because there, there is a brightness adaptation. So, over time, you'll see more and more, you see, the, the things go, get brighter over time. Not that much, because it's totally pitch dark, but something. And with a bit of light, you can see way better around. And it gives a quiet color tint that is nice. I don't know, I like it, I like it. I don't know what you think about that, but I like the color tint of that. It's very nice. Another thing that is new. We can um, grab and drop objects. So let's put that, I think if not, we'll not be seeing anything. So you can grab a chair. And you can move the chair around. That's with the F to grab the chair. And then 
G to drop the chair. F, you can grab the vase. You can see that also you move slower when, when grabbing it. Yeah, now it has closed the door by itself. That's a ghost event. And we can drop the vase. Uh, yeah, what's next? What can I show you next? Yeah, you may be wondering, okay, what is that for? Well, uh, to be honest, it was for no reason. That's because I thought there was a mechanic that I could use later. But I implemented something already for this. So it turns out that in each map, uh, we are uh, making three random objects to be haunted. And if I go on the scan, you can see here with the UV torch that this one highlights. This is one of the enchanted objects. Uh, or haunted objects, I don't know. Um, the thing is that they are special. And it's special because if it, this one lights with green like that, with a UV torch, means that the ghost likes this one, likes to come here. And they can grab it, move it somewhere else, and because the, the, the ghost likes to grab it, to go for it, um, it, it will be close to that area. You can move it, I mean, outside, the ghost is gonna, gonna like it, I think. But yeah, uh, you can move it to a particular room and so on to make sure that the ghost is roaming the roaming the room that you like. There are two items like this, two items that are in green. It's random, so we'll need to be searching for the other one. This is random. I don't know which one it is, so you need to search and see if randomly. Uh, the, luckily, this map is one of the smallest. It's the smallest map, and this is the second one. You can also look where the ghost is going. Because he tends to go between the spawn point and those items. That's where he likes to go. Then, also here with the um, this flashlight. It's red. I'm giving a second use. Very similar to the other one. Where there is a third item, like this one, that glows blue. And this is an item that the ghost does not like. Meaning that it will try to stay away from it. Another mechanic that you can grab, grab it and move it somewhere else to keep it away from some somewhere that you don't you don't want to be kind of interrupted by the ghost. But overall, those are mechanics that are just there for testing to see if they improve the gameplay and how, and then they are up for tuning. Yeah, uh, still. And that's how the ghost is hunting. Let's see. Oh. Was hunting with a totally in red, very angry. And now it's normal. Now it's hunting again. Okay. You can see the vignette effect in red ab uh, around. That means that I'm losing health. And uh, even the screen will start begin. Yeah, making it all red, meaning that I'm, I'm losing health. The health is recovered automatically. You cannot see the percentage of health. You just need to be outside for a second, and you will be gaining health again. But there is also sanity. And sanity is also lost when you're inside. When you are in the truck or outside, you're recovering sanity automatically. Slowly, but automatically. So that's to avoid you from being all the time inside. As you get less and less sanity, the ghost gets more crazy with you, will hate you more, and will start hunting more quickly. So you want to be outside from time to time to go recover and see, strategize. So that's the idea. So you have a limited inventory. You have two items plus the two hands, left hand, right, right hand, and two items that you are in your pockets. That's the limit, and you need to come back to the track to start changing them. Um, what else? What else? Because we covered grab and, grab and drop, we covered the ghost objects, we saw a ghost hunt. Uh, of course, the ghost hunt, we could try to see if we can hide from the ghost. 
Let's see. If the ghost is willing to hunt. Another thing that I have done is to reduce the difficulty of the game. Um, the ghost is hunting less than before. Sanity is dropping less than before. So, a lot of changes that are making the game easier because now I'm get, getting it to be more complicated because the ghost is roaming more because it has the objects and uh, you might want to search for the objects and so on so you have to do more stuff on the house so it makes sense that we make it a bit easier so you can stay more time in the house and manage the stuff because it's not as simple as before it's not the one to hunt that's not one to hunt. Where are you, Mr. Ghost? Mr. Ghost, where are you? Come here and hunt. And I think this is all. I'll show you the hiding behavior. Let's see. If we can make it hunt. There it is. Let's run somewhere else. Let's hide under the bed, maybe. And yeah, it gets confused. It hasn't stopped hunting me. Here it comes, here it comes, here it comes. Drums a bit up and down, moves around the area. Really last see you. And it can kill you like that. In fact, it has killed me. So, of course, if you hide in front of the of the ghost, the ghost cannot see you, but the, the ghost just drums around the point where it last has seen you. I mean, not from the point that you are, but the point that the last point that the ghost was. So, that from the point that the, the ghost stops seeing you, it starts taking kind of a random path. And if you are too close, well, you can get killed. So yeah, um, that's all. I can try to show more or less like a typical run, how it's done. Typical run of the game is uh, first locating the the ghost um, the ghost room. So we want to see the spawn point, the, the bridge. We saw in, in white before. So here. Okay. We have it located and we have one of the special items here. Okay. Next thing we want to get the temperature of the room. We see this negative. Okay, done. Now we want the EMF meter. Is EMF five is good. And this one, it, we see with night vision that the uh, bridge is uh, reacting to the night vision. Goes on and off. That's also found. So we got three evidences already. So we can discard those three items. And we can grab for next three items. We can do this, this, and this. Okay, for example. The red torch. The red torch, that's the item that it doesn't like. You have to illuminate the ghost. And if you see going glowing orange, you see this glowing orange? It's a bit subtle. But instead of being black, it becomes orange. Sometimes you need to... I mean, and if it is attacking, you're not going to see it. It cannot be attacking for that. Come on, stop attacking. Stop. Stop. Stop there. Come on. Do you want to kill me? Do you want to kill me? Yes, he wants to kill me. He wants to kill me very crazy. Oh my god. Oh my god. I am almost dead. I am very dead. Go back. Go back. Go back. 
still attacking? Oh, so crazy. Okay, attack finished. I don't know where it is. There it is. Oh, come on. It was glowing orange. Yeah, it glows orange. It's a bit too subtle, maybe. But yeah, it is glowing orange. That's one of the things that needs tun tuning. But anyway, this kind of evidence probably will change for now. They are a bit simplistic. So this one is done. Need to go outside and let the ghost calm down. We can use meanwhile this one. Because this one is the, is the most simple one. The spirit box. You don't need even to go inside right now. You can just be outside. And basically you are, we are listening. For something weird. And meanwhile we can start the Geiger counter. The Geiger counter. Can start... Go from here, maybe. We can see the the inside from from the windows. So the spirit box is not doing anything. It's just static. That's telling me that it, it should come earlier. It's probably not a spirit box. So let's discard that. Unless the recorder. The recorder we show here, EVP recorded here. So we have to be looking here. To be around the, the ghost. It's very angry. And, I, and they made it easier. And still is attacking a lot. is not showing EVP recorded at all. It's around here. I cannot see it, but, but the ghost is around here. And it doesn't show EVP recorded. Okay. And this one, the this is a Geiger counter. The idea is that you get close to the ghost around that and uh, it can go above 500. If it is above 500, then it's the evidence because the ghost is radioactive. And I don't think that's the evidence either. Come here to the journal. We can see here that the only thing missing is the UV ectoplasm that should have, and this is the ghost. So that means that I should, for example, if we went to from with a UV torch, the ghost will glow green. If it is not hunting. If it is not hunting. That's so crazy. You can say that I'm not playtesting this enough. Because I thought it was easier and I'm adopting that it's easier. It's getting very angry. Oh my god. See? See how it's green? It glows green. Now you cannot see it anymore. The ghost I mean. There. You can see the ghost is glowing green. So yeah, that tells you exactly which ghost it is. So you can make the repellent. Here is the repellent. It's automatically made in your right hand. And we know just to go find the ghost and drop the repellent.
let's turn off that. Where are you, Mr. Ghost? See, because of the of the new objects that I added, now the ghost is roaming more. It's going to different places. So it's not that easy to to find the ghost anymore. Where are you? Oh, 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 oh. There it is. There it is. Okay, let's drop the repellent now. See the flashing lights? And now it's attacking me. Oh, this is even good. Uh, it has stopped attacking me. Oh, it's gone. I think it's gone. So yeah, one of the things, there is no feedback when the ghost is expelled. You need to check it by yourself. There is no ghost anymore. Okay. And we finished. I mean, if you need another repellent, you can create another repellent. But we don't need because it's done. We click end mission. And we expel the ghost. It took nine minutes. We use one charge. And we are still alive. But yeah. Yeah, that's a hunter. We have the several maps, two tutorials, the first map, the small house, the big house, and the super big map with the school. So yeah, uh, that's it. I think I didn't forget about anything. I think that's all. Well, that's it. See you. Bye.